Hi, and welcome to Orbis Multiplex, a complex simulation oriented indie strategy game on planetary scale. Today, I'd like to talk about three of the main features I've added as of the 0.1.4 build. The first is that rivers now diffuse water out from them, which enables vegetation in otherwise deserts. I'm also going to talk about the initial purlin noise, which now enables plateaus and give some more interesting mountain ranges. And lastly, I'd like to talk about industry production factors, um, which um, affects uh, where certain buildings, in this case a farm, can be built. But let's talk about uh, rivers and how they now diffuse water. This river here passes through the desert, which gives rise to vegetation around um, around it. This previously was not the case. What I've added is a layer called groundwater. Groundwater diffuses out from rivers and groundwater is com combined with precipitation, which is this layer here, to form moisture. We can here say, see that even though the precipitation is low in the desert, the moisture is sort of high because of this groundwater. So, how do I calculate the groundwater? Well, I do that using a uh, diffusion on the GPU. So I thought that I'd uh, quickly go through the kernel. It's pretty small. I have two kernels, a diffusion kernel and an update kernel. I have um, three main buffers here. They are eleva elevation, water flow and the ground permeability. Elevation is just taken from the elevation field. Water flow uh, is taken from rivers and ground permeability is a value I'll talk about later, but it has to do with how easily water can diffuse through the ground. Uh, J, K and L here are adjacent indices. So a tile uh, in my world is a triangle and a triangle always has uh, three adjacent tiles and these J, K and L are the indices to do adjacent tiles. I use uh, two buffers for the groundwater. One final that I will return from GPU computation and the temporary one. So let's start with the first kernel, the diffusion kernel. Firstly here, I calculate some values, one for each adjacent tile, and these are dependent on elevation changes. So water is more easily flows downhill than uphill and that is modeled here i um, use those um, diffusion parameters here that i've calculated previously to get a new value which is stored in the temporary here i do a check to see if temporary is smaller than uh, the water flow of that tile uh, and it is, this, it is this step that uh, creates the groundwater to begin with from rivers. And lastly, I do a fall off based on this ground permeability. And it is such that if ground permeability is one here, then this fall off will not occur. And if it's zero, then the fall off in this case uh, is 20%. And this is how much groundwater decreases each uh, time it tries to diffuse. And lastly, I have an update kernel. Uh, you need to do this in two kernels, otherwise it will not be um, able to run in, in parallel safely. You will get reference problems. Uh, so that is this, uh, that's this kernel. It's pretty easy. So now I'll go over the changes I've made to the in uh, initial elevation generation. This shows the landscape when it's been eroded. Um, what you can notice here that there are some new features. There are plateaus here. There is a, a higher elevation plateau here and a lower elevation plateau here. And this here is a mountain with a mountain range like this. If we look at the initial elevation, this becomes much more clear. The dark green here is more or less sea level. This light green is low plateaus. 
this sort of yellow is a higher plateaus and then we have mountains and what I've done inside mountains is that I've added um, a high frequency noise within mountain ranges which creates creates this uh, sort of uh, peak feature which when it gets eroded looks a lot better than previously so I'd like to talk or maybe just mention how I design these um, Perlin noises. If we um, examine x here, it's a value simply between minus 1 and 1. You could see that as uh, a default Perlin noise. And I then use two kinds of equations. The, this, uh, 1 minus the absolute value of x and arcus tangens of x to get two kinds of features. The orange and green here I call uh, ridged noise, which gives these kinds of behaviors. And this is good for the mountain ranges, for example, and the peaks. And arcus tangens, the red and purple here, gives, um, with proper parameters here, it can give plateaus. Now, these values here are not normalized like uh, the purple here goes between minus pi a half and uh, pi a half in the code i normalize this so everything is between zero and one so i can briefly show the code here is the line where i um, create initial elevation I use five layers of um, noise to do this. I have a roughness, a roughness noise, which is just uh, a low magnitude, high frequency noise used to uh, create a nice texture. I then use two noises, mountain range and peak. M the mountain range noise is what gives um, the general look of mountain ranges. It defines the like large scale features. Whilst this peak noise is the little like uh, higher uh, frequency uh, noise within mountain ranges. And I combine it like this and scale it with uh, the maximum elevation. I then have two kinds of plateau noise, a, low, a lower plateau and a high plateau. At the moment, uh, they are um, hard coded to 1000 elevation and 2000 elevation, but uh, maybe I'll add an option in the GUI sometime so you can manually change this. Uh, but overall, I think that this new noise is much more interesting, uh, especially when it comes to the mountain ranges. Something I still have to work on is um, hill slide processes uh, and sedimentation, which in this case here, if we look at this tile here, for example, the elevation is 40 meters above ground and up here it's like 5,000. Um, in real world, the land would begin to slide down to fill up this. And when you go from this tile here, because it, it rains down here, uh, 40 elevation down to zero, uh, the difference would be much higher. It's very flat, this um, valley here. That's not realistic. But uh, yeah, at the moment, I'm uh, pretty satisfied with this. And it interacts well with um, biomass as well. Like this high plateau has a lot lower biomass than the lowland. So up here, for example, there are just grass. The elevation is 3,000 3, meters. So no trees can exist here. If we go down here at 1,500 meters, then there are trees, but not up on this plateau, which 
uh, give some interesting features. So lastly, I want to talk about um, the industry production factor system I've got going. Um, if we build an industry, for example, the farm, there is some uh, icons down here. I call them factors. In this case, it's temperature, moisture and slope. And what these factors does is that uh, they modify the output mo multiplier, this value here, depending on what the temperature, the moisture or the slope is. There is uh, like another building, like the pasture. Um, its multiplier is dependent on temperature and moisture. But previously, um, if you wanted to know this value here, like it will be different depending on where we build it. If we try to build a, a farm down in the desert, this will be zero. And if we try to build it, I don't know, up here in the jungle, it will be one. Uh, previously, if you wanted to know this value, you had to go in here and build <laughs> the building itself, which is a bit... Um, no, not, not the best solution. So what I have now is that I've added a new tab to the map filters. And here, all uh, industries which are dependent on environmental factors are listed. So we can click farm and very easily see where it's beneficial to place farms. So on this red land here, farms will always operate at 100%. And up here, they will operate at 0%. If we look here, yeah, it's a mountain. So up on a mountain, um, the temperature is pretty low, so it won't operate. Uh, but also down in the desert here, the moisture is way too low. But along this river here, it seems that the moisture is sufficient for at least some farmability. 0 0.55 in this case. It's not 100%, but... It's uh, more than nothing. Also here, it uh, looks a bit rugged, but there are tiles here with lower um, farmability value. And uh, if we look at the elevation, we can see that it's the edge of this um, plateau. Um, and farms are affected by slope. So if we look here, the slope is slightly higher along the edge of the plateau. Uh, here up uh, in the mountain, it's a very high slope. So yeah, that should uh, make it more easy to um, successfully place buildings in places where they uh, won't be uh, useless. So that's all the major features I've added since last time. So what are, am I going to do next? Well, there are two main things I want to work on. Uh, one of the things are um, automatic turns. At the moment, you need to press this next turn button if you want uh, the simulation to progress. For example, if you've uh, built uh, industries and want to see how they process uh, resources and how those resources are transpo transported, then you need to uh, constantly press this next turn button, which, um, you know, if you have a large... Um, network of industries you might have to press this like a hundred times or 50 times before you um, uh, before resources are transported uh, to the places where you need them so what i'll be working on next is um, automatic turns this should automatically tick along without a need to press it uh, maybe at an interval of um, one tick every 10 seconds I should probably make it such that uh, you can change the speed, maybe do it um, with 5 second intervals, 10 second intervals, half a minute intervals, and uh, depending uh, on your com uh, CPU, uh, most of uh, the processes done in this next turn simulation are CPU dependent, so depending on your CPU, uh, you could uh, run this uh, at various speeds. Um, Something else I want to look into are uh, road networks. At the moment, uh, resources are only transported 
uh, on tiles with industries and their adjacent tiles and I would like to be able to manually place roads so those are two features I want to add next with that I'd like to end this video and thank you for watching uh, if you'd like to download or and try to run the program you can do so on itch.io it's completely free so bye